Mike, the Strawberry Line Miniature Railway. Just give me a little bit of its history. It started in 1999. Um, I had two or three five-inch gauge engines and decided to put it to a permanent track and we built this. When you say we, it's, it's your railway, isn't it? H how did you approach it? Is it a commercial venture? It is a commercial venture, yeah. I'm, I've got one full-time employee, but I've got about 30 volunteers and we work as one, just one big team. There's no bosses and nobody in charge. All I do is pay the bills. And what's quite interesting, it sustains itself, doesn't it? Yeah, income uh, from the rides. Oh yes, yes, it's got to. It's, it's got to pay my wages and also a, a member of an, another employee. General Wisdom says that for a passenger carrying miniature railway, seven and a quarter is about as small as you should go. Why did you decide to go five? That was the common thought of the day, that five inch was no, not suitable for a passenger carrying railway. In the beginning we had problems, but we decided that it was, and we just carried on experimenting. It just was quite safe now. We've, we've had one incident in ten years of one derailment where somebody's got hurt. Apart from that, it's been perfect. Presumably it is derailments that are the main problem in this scale. You get derailments on all gauges, no matter what it is, seven and a quarter. Let's take British Rail, for instance. When I was a train driver for them ten years ago, it wasn't an unusual thing to have sort of trains drop off the track, so there's no difference. You've certainly had to try and um, circumnavigate, minimise it, shall we say, as much as you possibly can. How have you set about doing that with the carriages, for example? Well, we've beefed the wheels up. The wheels are four times the size they were before. The footsteps are uh, two, inch, two or three inches wider. We've got anti-derailment bars fitted to all the coaches. It was just trial and error just to get it right. I spent two years experiment, experimenting with coaches in the beginning, and we're just improving all the time. Even now we're still improving that today. So you've shown that a miniature railway can pay its way and uh, five inches certainly not prevented anyone from joining. You've got 30 volunteers, haven't you? You've got a healthy, as we've seen today, uh, amount of rolling stock. Oh yes, there's, I think it's near enough 100 items of rolling stock now. It varies from a breakdown crane right through to a diesel shunter to a 35 vehicle freight train. And we've also got visiting engines as well from all over the country. We've got one in today from Chester, another two more in from near Western Supermare. They're all over the place. Chris, it's Mike's Railway, but it couldn't happen without guys like you. How, how did you get involved with the Strawberry Line? Uh, I was passing, basically. I was told to call in by a guy who was one of our drivers uh, on some of the excursion traffic and um, just called in. I was expected. I'd been told you know, calling in, and it sort of carried on from there, really. We call in from time to time with other drivers from, from our, the company that I work for, and they seem to enjoy themselves. Yes, because like many people who enjoy railways as their pastime, you, you work for them as well, don't you? And you're also not a local lad, are you, Chris? Chester. Chester, so it's a bit of a drive down here. Is it worth it? Well, yeah, I would say so. You've got to be a little bit insane in this. But he's, he's not a bad character to come and work for, you know. On a Sunday, three times nothing. You know, you get travel time, three times nothing, still nothing, so. It can't be bad, though, uh, a bad way to spend the day, is it, to uh, yeah, entertaining kids, basically, both young and old? Well, yeah. Um, there's those people that like football and there's those people that like playing trains. And we run a railway here as opposed to play trains. You, you come under the same rules and regulations as everybody else. You, if you have a major mishap here, you're going to be reported to the rail inspector. Well, uh, we've, uh, we're, we're fans of um, football and trains, as it happens, uh, but we're big fans of the two steam engines that you've been running today. The first one we looked at was the, was the Black 5. It's a recent acquisition for you, isn't it? Well, it's a recent acquisition for the wife. She's paid for it. Um, yeah, um, it was started by somebody just after the war, and it's you know, 40 years of work, and it's a sort of privilege to own it. 
and I don't think I'd ever have the time to build one. But I've come into a little bit of a few pennies and we spent it on that and altered the workshop to, to cope with the loco now and we can look after it rather than build one from scratch. Now I'm not familiar with the second locomotive that we've seen, it, looks, it certainly looks European to me. Yeah, it's, it's German, built just before the First World War um, and there was, it was one of three. Uh, it's, it's owned by a gentleman that lives not far away from here and I sort of run it for him when he... Magnificent looking loco, isn't it? It's a, it, it's a privilege to, to, to well, I say play with these things, it's a, it's a privilege to run these. Um, when, when other people spend the money to buy them, it's, it's sort of nice to be trusted with them. And let other people have a little go, of course.
Do you think that, you know, since 1999, the line's now reached its its ultimate being? Oh, no, 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 no. Where we are actually stood at this present moment, I'm going to build a hump yard. Uh, and then follow on behind that will be a model village. Um, we've got extra freight wagons to build. We've got extra passenger coaches to build. There's five more engines in the workshop being built at the moment. No, we never stop. We just keep going. Because you're in a marvellous position here, aren't you? You know, sort of sandwiched between Bath and Bristol, the South West motorway connections. Well, apparently this is one of the best situated railways anywhere in the country. How true that is, I don't know, but apparently there's about three and a half million people who live within five miles of this place. Where they live, I don't know, because I don't see them at night, but uh, that's, that's what I'm told anyway. Well, um, it was very easy to find this morning, and it's very hard to leave at the end of the day. We've had a very enjoyable day here. Thanks very much, Mike. No problem. Thanks for, thanks for coming.